Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The City of Greensboro is requesting proposals for the sale and development of a 24-unit apartment complex located at 1004 John Dimry Drive. This request for proposal includes an option to apply for a low-interest housing rehabilitation loan up to $500,000 using federal community development block grant funds from Housing and Urban Development. Proposals for this project should be directed to the city's Neighborhood Development Department no later than 5 p.m. on Friday, September 6. For more information, call Valerie Moore at 336-373. 4636. The Commission on the Status of Women will celebrate the anniversary of women's suffrage. The recognition will take place at the annual Women's Equality Day breakfast from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. on Saturday, August 17th at the Greensboro Coliseum Terrace. Keynote speaker this year is Valda Ford, recognized as an expert on women's health, leadership, and cultural competency. She has been a contributor on major networks such as ABC, NBC, Fox, and CBS. Ford is an award-winning public speaker and CEO of the Center for Human Diversity. Tickets are $25 and can be purchased through the city's Human Relations Department, RSVP, no later than Wednesday, August 14th. Tickets will not be sold at the door. The Commission on the Status of Women works to improve the quality of life for women in Greensboro in part by creating and conducting educational programs on issues affecting women. The Greensboro Coliseum Terrace is located at 1921 West Gate City Boulevard. For more information, contact the City's Human Relations Department at 336-373-2038. Regional Transit in the Triad is relying on smart technology. The Piedmont Authority for Regional Transportation, or PART, has two new digital payment options with TouchPass Mobile and Smart Card Ticketing. This technology allows passengers to purchase passes online or through the app, pay fares with a scan or a tap, and ultimately speed up the boarding process. PART plans to transition all passengers to touch pass by the end of September as paper passes are no longer sold. The touch pass app and smart card are designed to shorten and simplify the boarding process by allowing passengers to simply tap their smart card or scan the QR code on the mobile app to board. Although PART buses will continue to accept cash as a fare payment, the agency has already seen positive results from the system and is encouraging riders to try it. Riders who sign up for this program will get their first ride free. To learn more about the TouchPass mobile and smart card ticketing systems, visit PART's website. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. 70% of Americans say they want to die at home. And in reality, 70% of Americans die in hospitals and facilities. Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Golding, Medical Director for the Palliative Medicine Team at Cone Health, a member of Cone Health Medical Group. I would like to talk to you today about one of the most important conversations you can have with your loved ones, a conversation about end of life and advanced care planning. There's nothing more heartbreaking for me uh, as a physician to sit down with a family who is in the midst of crisis. They have a loved one who may be nearing end of life, an unexpected heart attack, stroke, uh, or other serious illness, and they have to make decisions about their loved one's care, and that loved one can't speak for themselves. By completing these documents, by having the conversation early, you're giving a gift to your family. You're giving them the gift of reassurance that they're acting in a way that you would want them to if your health should deteriorate. It may start at your first visit with your adult doctor. Uh, so you may begin by doing something called a living will or a healthcare power of attorney form. 
This form really is designed to protect you when you're young, should you have an, a horrible accident, should you have uh, an unexpected uh, serious terminal illness diagnosis, uh, or should you get unexpectedly ill. It will guide your loved ones in <clears throat> making decisions that you would want. As you move forward through your life, there may be points where you need to think about revisiting your advance directive. And when I say an advance directive, I'm talking about the forms that support a conversation that you should have with your loved ones. Um, a living will and a healthcare power of attorney are legal documents and they do require signatures, uh, witnesses, and a notary. As you move forward at certain points in your life, uh, maybe even when you renew your driver's license or uh, as you age, uh, perhaps if you have a hospitalization or uh, maybe even your job changes, maybe you are involved in a high-risk job, maybe you're in the military, uh, certain points in your life you need to revisit your advance directives. One of the things that I always say a good point to revisit your advance directives is when you enroll in Medicare. And when you enroll in Medicare, you should make sure that you have your documents in place. And that should be a reminder to also have the conversation with your family. At the time of a, a new diagnosis of a serious illness, these things should uh, require some preparation. One of the things we uh, can talk about is how to start that conversation. The first part of that is uh, thinking in your own mind and doing a little preparation before you talk to your loved ones. Uh, so uh, thinking about what matters to you um, and try to get a plan in place uh, to talk about those things. Uh, it could be uh, at certain uh, points that you think are important. Maybe around the holidays when you have your family together. Uh, it may be just at the dinner table. Uh, and uh, sometimes I'll say, you know, um, think about somebody else you know who's been really sick. You can use that as a context for the conversation. If, so-and-so isn't doing well, well, I would or would not want those kinds of things. Um, you can also uh, talk about it within the context of um, a, a newly diagnosed health problem. Sometimes family members will be taken back by the conversation. Uh, I remember talking to my 100-year-old grandmother who did not want to have that conversation. Um, but it's really important that we talk about these things because we want to uh, make sure we are doing the right thing for our loved ones. Not what we want, but what our loved ones want. That way, they won't have to live their life wondering, did I do the right thing for my mom? Did I do the right thing for my dad? Did I do the right thing for my wife or my husband? They will know and they will have the confidence that the care that was provided to them at the end of life was the best that it could be. So advanced care planning, is the way to ensure that that actually happens. Thank you for joining me. I hope this has been helpful for you and your family. Please don't wait for a crisis to occur. Start the conversation today about your wishes at end of life. For more information, go to conehealth.com slash advanced directive. I'm Elizabeth Golding with the Palliative Medicine Team at Cone Health. The city needs the community's help to pitch in and take part in the Adopt-A-Stream program. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The City of Greensboro is accepting new and unwrapped school supplies in lieu of parking ticket fines issued during the month of August. Donations must be made within 30 days of the infraction, not including handicapped parking violations. A receipt is required since the value of the school supplies must be equal to or greater than the fine. The City will donate the school supplies to the Guilford Education Alliance Teacher Supply Warehouse, which allows teachers to shop for items at no cost up to four times a year. Suggested school supply donations include glue sticks, crayons, pencils, erasers, spiral notebooks, dry erase markers, and loose leaf notebook paper. Other items students could use include three ring binders, antibacterial wipes, folders, flash drives, construction paper, and scissors. These school supplies must be dropped off at the Parking Enforcement Office located in the main entrance of the Melvin Municipal Office Building at 300 West Washington Street. Donations will not be accepted as payment at the Water Resources Operations Center. 
If you've seen trash and debris floating in a stream near your neighborhood and you'd like to do something about it, the Water Resources Department invites you to participate in the Adopt a Stream program. The city has more than 50 active organizations participating in this program, but there are many more sections of waterways that are in need of our community's environmental stewardship. Local streams in Greensboro serve many uses from stormwater runoff to habitats for aquatic life. Residents can help keep the streams clean by committing to and maintaining a segment for a minimum of two times a year for a two-year period. After the first cleanup, a sign with your group's name will be posted at the stream and members of the team will receive Adopt-A-Stream car magnets. Also, the name of your group will be added to the city's website. Put your passion for service and the environment to good use. Visit the city's website to register online. Stay tuned for details about the NC Stream Watch program facilitated by Stormwater Smart. This involves testing water quality of neighborhood streams or stream areas of choice. The Downtown Greenway is seeking artists from across the country to submit a proposal for the Freedom Cornerstone. This will be the last of the four cornerstones to be built on the Downtown Greenway. The theme of freedom was inspired by the city's role in the civil rights movement, specifically the nonviolent protest of the pivotal 1960 Greensboro lunch counter sit-ins that served as a catalyst to the larger movement. Racial justice and equity have played an important role in shaping Greensboro and defining its identity. The selected artists will be asked to explore this history in depth as they conceive a vision for the artwork. The deadline for submissions is at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, August 21st. For more information or to review the submission guidelines, visit the Downtown Greenway website. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on Bernie Jennings and his famous biscuits. Biscuitville, the region's most beloved breakfast restaurant, has 54 locations in two states, and CEO Bernie Jennings is a familiar face in every location. He likes to meet people and doesn't like to hide in the office. He says this is a people business. If you don't like people, you won't make it in this business. It's not just about the numbers. The Elon University graduate has spent two decades at the helm of Biscuitville, but he's been working there much longer than that. Bernie is the second generation leader of a family business started by his father more than 50 years ago. Bernie worked in the restaurants as a teen back when the business included Pizzaville restaurants. During his tenure, Bernie has overseen a successful transition in the company's branding to Fresh Southern, which included the addition of a new lunch menu and an emphasis on the business's locally produced ingredients. The flour comes from Henderson, North Carolina, the honey comes from Winston-Salem, and the country ham is custom cut in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Many suppliers are family-owned, multi-generational businesses. Bernie says that's important to him. In his words, this isn't your typical quick-service restaurant. We're a family business where you get a different level of service. To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. The city's executive leadership team has a whole new lineup. Coming up after the break, we'll introduce you to the latest addition to the city manager's team. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. There are a few new faces in the city manager's office as internal promotions have resulted in a change to the executive leadership team. 
Joining me now to tell us about the objectives outlined in his new role is Larry Davis. He is the Assistant City Manager of Internal Services. Hello, Larry. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for joining me. So tell me about your tenure with the city and how that led to you being Assistant City Manager. Sure. I actually began working with the city in 1988. Uh, I came to the city as a budget and evaluation analyst. And back then, we were actually part of the finance department. In the early 1990s, we were uh, segmented out, created as a separate department called Budget and Evaluation. At the time, our budget director uh, was Pat Pate. Uh, Pat uh, left for High Point to be an assistant city manager in 1999. And I was fortunate enough to uh, be promoted into the budget director position and had been there since 99 until until this this opportunity. Okay, well congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. Um, tell me about the departments that you oversee and what is your overall objective as far as providing leadership? Sure. Uh, the departments that I work with uh, include finance, internal audit, information technology, uh, human resources, and budget and evaluation, my, my old home. Yeah. Now these are collectively oftentimes referred to as internal services and they certainly have an internal component to their customer database. A lot of what those departments do uh, are, is for the benefit of city employees. But as I continue to work with them and learn more about them, I'm really impressed at to what degree they really have an outward facing aspect to the department. Uh, whether it's someone uh, wanting to apply for a job, whether it's a vendor wanting to do business with the city, or whether it's any number of people wanting to find information on a city website. Uh, these departments have a lot of external customers. Yes. One of their biggest challenges and one of, one of the areas I'm hoping to be helpful is developing those uh, priorities that serve both internal and external customers. Uh, how do you handle the daily transactional items that have to get done while you still strategically plan for the future for both your internal customers and your external customers. Okay, and speaking of strategic planning, you are overseeing, if you will, the strategic planning component for the city. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that effort and what does it mean overall, sure. organizationally and to our residents? Okay. Well, the city has operated for, for quite a while now under five goals that were established by city council. They're very aspirational in nature. Uh, they speak, speak to big ticket items, if you will, uh, or big picture items. Things like providing a safe community or providing the appropriate environment for economic development. What we're trying to do through the leadership team, through the city manager's office and department heads and other staff uh, within the city that are part of this process, is we're trying to bring those down into a more manageable, understandable level and we are trying to create what we're referring to as strategic priorities. And that's where you take something as broad as, say, public safety or a safe community, which typically makes you think traditionally of police, fire, Guilford Metro 911, but perhaps not much beyond that. Yeah. Uh, what we're trying to do is, as we, as we think through these and talk through them as a leadership team, we realize that a safe community includes things like appropriate traffic, management, uh, sidewalks and bike lanes for pedestrian safety and bike safety. It includes things like providing opportunities for youth to participate in cultural activities or athletic activities in a safe format. So as we get into the strategic priority part of this, if you will, we think almost all of our departments will start to see, I have a role in public safety. I have a role in making our community safe. And eventually, we, we hope all of our employees will begin to see that regardless of what department you're working in, there's a piece of this that ties your work to these aspirational goals. Nice. And of course, the work we do directly impacts our residents, and that's why we're here. We are service providers. Absolutely. Uh, now, this effort is intended to integrate our new organizational philosophy that the city manager has outlined. Uh, to be purpose-driven, data-informed, people-centered. Can you tell us how you're working to tie all of this together? Well, that, that outline or that vision that our city manager, David Parrish, has given us really grounds us in everything that we do so that even as we're working towards creating these strategic priorities, uh, th that really serves as a checklist. No matter what we're doing, we always want to go back and say, are we meeting this, these philosophical guideposts, if you will? Uh, whatever that strategic priority is or whatever 
program or service you're providing that you believe moves us toward that strategic priority, does it meet this philosophical goal, uh, guidepost? Does it, does it create um, a sense of purpose? And is that purpose public safety, or excuse me, public service? Um, is the data that you're basing your decisions on valid and verifiable? Um, is it truly a data-informed decision? And finally, is it people-centered? Uh, no matter what decisions we're making, have we thought about the impact to people? Have we thought about the impact to the customer, whether that customer is outside the city or inside? Mm -hmm. So it really kind of weaves its way through all of this work, uh, or we believe it will and, and that it should, uh, so that we will meet those philosophical guidelines even as we're developing those strategic priorities. Wonderful. And I think the community can appreciate a government that is people-centered because they are the crux of what we do, why we do what we do, but also to see the end result of our service provision is directly impacting them. And they're providing the money. Yes. You know, they're, they're providing the resources. And so this is a way of saying to the public, this is our decision-making process. Here's how we decide how to spend your money. Here's why more money went here than there, right. because we believed it was moving towards a strategic priority that, that you have demonstrated um, or have outlined as a priority for the community. Wonderful. Well, Larry, thank you for taking time to stop by and allow our viewers to get a chance to know who you are and thank what you. you're doing for the city, and congratulations again on your promotion. Do come back and keep us posted on all of these initiatives. I will. I appreciate the invitation. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little-known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot make it to City Hall, we broadcast the meetings right here on GTN. The meetings are held in the council chambers are also streamed live on the city's website. Meetings on the first Tuesday of the month will take place in one of the city's five council districts to allow council members to engage more residents. Those meetings will be broadcast the following Saturday at 10 a.m. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month will continue to take place on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building, located at 300 West Washington Street. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting locations, schedule, and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. The Greensboro Transit Agency, or GTA, is operating a series of route changes as a result of the Mobility Greensboro 2040 short-term transit plan, 14 of the system's 17 daily routes include the addition, relocation, or removal of some of the 1,100 bus stops in the city. One of the most notable changes splits the overcrowded Route 12 to make room for a new Route 13. Route 12 will continue to serve South Elm Eugene, while Route 13 will provide coverage along the growing Randleman Road corridor. GTA has also created additional transfer points between routes to reduce the number of trips requiring transfers at the downtown depot. The service modifications are the result of an extensive outreach process that included public meetings, rider surveys, and an informative web portal at getonboard2040.org. The Greensboro Transit Advisory Commission voted in favor of the changes following a public hearing at the May 2019 meeting. The new route maps, schedules, and a video outlining the changes can be accessed on GTA's website. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Jasmine. This weekend, make the most of your last days of summer at these fantastic local events. Start your weekend off right with Food Truck Friday happening at Center City Park from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. This Friday, the Pearl Kitchen, Emerging Sweets, and Soul Fresh Spring Rolls will be on hand serving an array of delicious foods. Check them out and enjoy a beautiful lunch in the park. For more information, visit the LaBauer Park Facebook page. 
after work, stick around downtown for a free showing of the blockbuster movie How to Train Your Dragon 2 as part of the Spartan Cinema Series happening at LaBauer Park all summer long. The park lawn opens for seating at 5 p.m. and movies begin at sunset, usually around 8.30 p.m. Feel free to bring a blanket or chairs, grab a bite to eat at one of the kiosks, and enjoy your movie under the stars. Again, visit the LaBauer Park Facebook page for a complete list of upcoming films. If you prefer thrillers, head to Carolina Theater on Friday at 7 p.m. for a showing of Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, starring James Stewart. This is all part of the 12th Annual Summer Film Fest showing classic movies throughout the whole summer. Tickets are $7 for adults, $6 for students, teachers, seniors, and military and first responders. To purchase tickets, go to carolinetheater.com. Join us on Sunday for the Summer Reading Finale Party starting at 2.30 p.m. at Central Library. Harry and the Potters musical group will perform live. Dress up as your favorite Harry Potter character and join us for a wizardly afternoon filled with crafts, activities, games, and more. Visit greensborolibrary.org for more information. This Sunday night, there's music in the air. Enjoy music for a Sunday evening in the park while you can. This event is free and will be held at Latham Park featuring the musical stylings Wonderwall, The Tribute, a Beatles cover band at 6 p.m., and then stay for the funk band Doby beginning at 7.15 p.m. For more information, please go to greensboro-nc.gov slash MUSEP. The NC Folk Festival is happening this September 6th through 8th and will feature more than 300 artists on multiple stages with continuous performances. You can get involved. Sign up to volunteer and be a part of a special event. An event as large as this has many volunteer opportunities. There is something for everyone. Log on to ncfolkfestival.com slash volunteer for more information. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out about more events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Greensboro Guilford Crime Stoppers is partnering to provide a more seamless and efficient way for residents to report crime tips. Anderson Software leads the industry with its latest secure and anonymous crime tip solution called P3 Intel. The mobile app is free and available on Apple and Android platforms. Tips submitted through the mobile app are not limited in length and allow images, video and documents to be uploaded with the tip. P3 Tips' sophisticated encryption process obscures any and all identifying information, providing assured anonymity for tipsters. For those who don't want to use the app, an easy and secure option to submit tips can be done on a PC or mobile browser by going to p3tips.com. Tips are still welcomed via the hotline at 336-373-1000. Greensboro Guilford Crime Stoppers is a nonprofit which allows citizens to report crime without the fear of retaliation or retribution. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to Officer J.B. Price with the Greensboro Police Department. Officer Price received recognition during the Traffic Safety Awards Luncheon at the North Carolina Traffic Safety Conference and Expo in Raleigh. He was presented the award for Best Safety Educator. This award goes to the organization or person who goes above and beyond to teach road users how to travel safely. Way to go, Officer J.B. Price. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our five-minute flash briefings. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.